Our lesson today is on the SI units of measure. We're going to learn about our fundamental SI units and our derived SI units today. Our fundamental units, these are units that stand alone. So like when we're measuring in science, we will measure length in meters. The symbol for meters is a lowercase m. Then we have mass. For mass, we use the kilogram. This is the only fundamental unit that already has a metric prefix with it, kilo. Because most things that we're going to be measuring are going to um, have a mass much larger than just a gram. The kilogram is uh, a more realistic unit for us to use. For time, we will measure in seconds. The symbol for seconds is a lowercase s. We've already talked about in this unit temperature um, in Kelvin, a capital K, and there's no degree sign again. Let me remind you of that. And also for joules, we talked about that being our SI unit of energy. We use a capital J. Fundamental units stand alone. Now, the derived SI units, there are numerous derived SI units that we will learn later. And if you go on into the AP class, you will uh, learn um, even more in addition um, as well. But for now, we're going to start off with only two of our derived units, volume and density. The word derived just simply means that it's obtained from combinations of our fundamental units. So basically, they have a formula that you could use to solve. The first derived unit is for volume. Now, recall from our first unit that uh, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. And we said that was the volume. So the amount of space occupied by an object is its volume. Now, if you have something like a cube or a, a sphere, we have formulas that we can use to calculate volume. So a very common unit of volume here, the derived unit, is the centimeter cubed. So notice the C and the C I have in green here. Um, doctors and nurses might refer to this as CCs. You get so many CCs of medicine administered to you. Um, uh, we use CM to the third power because this is literally derived from a length times a width times a height, each measured in centimeters. So mathematically, if you were to take a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter, you would have a centimeter cubed. I'm sorry, I went ahead and cubed it up here. Okay, So a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter would give you a centimeter cubed. This is derived because it comes from the formula that you see here. Now, many times we use liquids. So there is also a common unit of volume that you need to be familiar with, but it is a non-SI unit. So I want to stress this is not an SI unit. It's just a common unit used with liquids. And there's so many liquids we use in chemistry and in science that we um, oftentimes will use this, like our beakers and our graduated cylinders. Um, our Erlenmeyer flask, they're going to uh, measure in milliliters typically. So here we have liters, it's a capital L. Now since we have two units of volume that we might would see, we need to be able to convert from one to the other, kind of like we convert um, our temperatures from one to the other with our formulas. So if it's necessary to convert between the two units, we need to use conversion factors. So you need to commit these to memory. The first conversion factor is that one milliliter is exactly the same as one centimeter cubed. In addition to that, one liter is equal to a decimeter cubed. So here we see an example where um, our given is in milliliters, and they want us to give, express our answer in decimeters cubed. So since these are not the same base unit, like here we see liter, here we see the meter cubed, the cubic unit, we can't just use our metric conversion chart that we learned about yesterday. 
until we get the same base unit. So what you want to do is you want to find the cubic unit and you want to substitute for it. So look up here and notice we do have decimeters cubed here and that's the cubic unit in the problem. So we're told here with this conversion factor that one decimeter cubed is exactly the same as one liter. So what you want to do is you want to kind of substitute there. I'm going to put liters in its place. They mean the same thing. So what the problem wants us to do is to convert from milliliters to liters. Notice there's no prefix here. So if we use our metric conversion line, we're going to be using the part that goes from over dead converting metrics from our mini kids have dropped over dead converting metrics um, conversion line. So we're starting at milli, so it means we're starting here. And we want to go to liters. Notice there's no prefix, so we're going to go to home base here. So let's count. One, two, three places backwards. I need to move my decimal. Again, start at milli. One, two, three places backwards. So go to your number, find your decimal, and let's move it three places backwards. One, two, three. Place your decimal and you're going to put your leading zero there. So that gives us for our answer point zero two five six decimeters cubed. Okay. We'll do some more of these in class. Let's move on to our second and final unit that's derived, density. Now, density is always reported with temperatures at which they were measured, and the reason is because your volume can change slightly with temperature. Remember, we talked about matter typically um, expands when it's heated and it contracts when it's cooled, so that means its volume is changing. So your density is going to always be reported with the temperatures they were measured. The standard formula for calculating density is the object's mass divided by its volume. Now, oftentimes, you're going to have to rearrange and solve for something other than just density. So that's where the density triangle comes in really handy. The density triangle, um, if you were to take a triangle and put a T here in the middle like I have here, and think DMV, like division of motor vehicles, okay, DMV, this allows you to get any relationship that you might would need mathematically between the three variables. As you notice, you cover up the D. If you cover up the D, that leaves you with M over V. So that's what we have here as this formula. But let's say they were we were asked to solve for mass, cover up the M. That would leave you with a formula mass equals, now notice your density is beside the volume, D times V. If you were asked to solve for volume, cover up the V. If you cover up the V, you're left with mass over density. So volume is equal to mass divided by density. The density triangle allows us to solve for any of the variables. So let's look at this example. You have a 10 centimeter cube piece of lead and it has a mass of 114 grams and wants to know what's the density. So I've already got the formula here, we just plug in. So you're gonna plug in for the mass, 114 grams divided by the volume, 10.0 centimeters cubed. And that's going to give you for your answer a unit in grams per centimeter cubed because the units do not cancel. Density will have a, um, a, is a derived unit. So if you take 114 and you divide that by 10, you're going to have, get 11.4 and that's going to be your final answer. Okay. We will do some more of these calculations in class. That's our lesson for today.